Our next speaker is Vincent Picave, and uh, he's going to be talking about uh, what you can find in the open source uh, GIS spec, uh, stack. You ready? Yes. Okay, thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to do a very beginner talk, so if you expect something technical or whatever, uh, you may leave as well. <laughs> I won't take offense. So it's it's mainly an overview of what's available on the market and especially when you think about migrating. So just as for me, I'm from Islandia and I'm, I'm actually the CEO. Uh, we are a service provider and we are actually uh, positioned as a QGIS editor, or co editor, of course, because we are not the only one uh, developing QGIS, but uh, we are a strong contributor to, uh, to QGIS and uh, we are an open source pure player. I've been in the uh, force for g industry with Australia for 10 years, so I've seen a lot of migration. And I think time has changed, so I'll show you a bit uh, what we can offer now uh, in comparison to proprietary system. I won't name the big corporation which is selling a lot of uh, products in the GIS world, uh, but uh, how many of you use S3 systems? <laughs> oh, I, I, I told <laughs> Okay, so like 10 to 15%, 20% maybe. Uh, so I'm speaking to you and to others who haven't any system yet. Um, I talk about migration. Uh, uh, we heard a bit of that uh, before. And uh, I will show you a proposal for a software stack uh, answering the needs of a GIS system in general. So first thing, when we go to big companies, big clients, and we say, oh, we have open source system for you to, uh, to use for your GIS. And they say, oh, open source, no, we don't want that. That's uh, too many software, it's too complicated, the quality is too low, it's bad. Uh, there is no support, no, no one to complain to. Uh, it's, uh, the, it, the features are poor, and you have uh, intellectual property risk associated, so please get away. And uh, that's usually what we were used to here for uh, more or less 10 to 20 years now with open source. But uh, hopefully uh, time has changed and now the, uh, the feedback is pretty different. Um, so we are now proposing a software stack uh, where we want some characteristics of the stack because uh, in effectively, uh, we have a lot of different uh, GIS software in open source, so what we want is a coherent stack uh, with the same foundation for the software we use, the same technologies globally, and uh, something which is uh, uh, kind of simple, because the less components we have in our stack, uh, also the better support we can provide, because you cannot know every single software piece by heart, you cannot have code developer for every single piece of software, so the less component you have, the better support you can provide to, to a specific client. Of course, we work as a community, we work together, so you can always find support, but uh, from a client side, uh, from a client point of view, uh, there are uh, used to have just one interlocutor, one person to talk to, and they want this person to be able to ensure support the, the as best as they can. Um, also, we want to reuse and to mutualize the software we use. So, um, why is that? It's because it's less expensive. So, if you use a software for one specific use case and the same software for another one, uh, then uh, you can uh, avoid some licenses fees and then you're more uh, cost efficient. We also want uh, better integration and compatibility between the, the different uh, components we, we use. So uh, we don't want to have to convert from one uh, file format to another one just to use another software, uh, which you will uh, use to output some data, which you will use in another software in another format that's complicated for the user, for the end user. Uh, so we want integration and compatibility because the software between the software pieces. Um, and for this stack, we will use PostJS and QGIS as key project because uh, nowadays that's what uh, is on the market mature and all. So uh, the stack is pretty simple, uh, and uh, I'll show you the different components we use, and uh, we expect this stack to be able to fulfill most of your needs in GIS. Um, 
talking here about global GIS needs, not specific needs like, I don't know, uh, very high-end uh, machine learning or very high-end uh, extra performance uh, map generation, that kind of thing. Uh, we, we're talking about multi-purpose, classic GIS use cases for uh, mostly big companies, okay? So uh, let's start with uh, libraries. Libraries are what uh, is at the heart of the software. It's uh, the basis of the software where the hard work is usually done. And uh, that's what we want to uh, use and materialize um, among the different software components we want to use later. And uh, we are very glad to have very good quality libraries in the open source uh, software environment in GIS, uh, namely GEOS. Uh, GEOS is for 2D geometry processing. So it handles, for example, intersections between polygons, points. Uh, it handles, uh, let's do buffer around this geometry. So this uh, geometrical computation is done inside uh, GEOS. Uh, you have to know that JS also is a derivative from a library called JTS, which is a Java library. So usually uh, algorithms are developed first by Martin Davis mostly on JTS and then implemented in JS in C++, uh, which is used everywhere else in uh, uh, open source GIS software. Then we have Proj. Uh, Proj is now version 6, which is uh, a very new thing. Uh, Proj has its name uh, handles projection, everything related to geodetics, so the very complex stuff you don't want to re-implement at all in any other software. You want to have it implemented once at one point and well implemented and uh, robust and solid and uh, of confidence as well. So that's a really, really important piece of software in the GIS world and um, What's really good is that uh, thanks to Evans Ruo and Howard uh, Butler and the Barn Rays uh, recently, uh, they had some funding to refactor Proj and implement uh, new features inside Proj, we, uh, which will make it like top of the art uh, projection library. Um, so thanks to them, Evan Rua did a really great job on this very difficult piece of software and um, thanks to everyone who contributed to uh, the funding as well. So Proj is one uh, very important piece of, uh, of software and on top of Proj you know probably GDAL or GUDAL as you pronounce it uh, and OGR uh, which is a uh, uh, day-to-day -day library of uh, every Phos4G user for GIS format conversion. It's a library, it's, a, it's also common line tools, but it's at the basis of a lot, lot, lot of different uh, GIS software, uh, be it proprietary or open source. That's a very important library too, and uh, that's a library allowing us to handle hundreds of formats of different formats, raster and vector. So that's the basis for uh, for the stack, and it's very important not to forget these libraries because usually uh, you have a lot of developers for QGIS, for example, but developers of Proj and Guda are not uh, there are not a lot of them, and it's very important for this library to be very robust. So we use mutualization. That's also uh, less uh, funding to get if you don't re-implement uh, format management or projection management in other software. Uh, data storage analysis, uh, POSGIS. Who doesn't use POSGIS here? Oh, that's a zero. <laughs> okay, great. So you are now PostGIS, so that's PostGIS. Of course, that's the database, GIS database of choice, be it for open source or even proprietary people come to PostGIS now by default. Um, in fact, PostGIS is great, but PostgreSQL is even greater. I mean, PostgreSQL is probably uh, one of the best piece of uh, free uh, op and open source software in the world. It's really a really, really good database and multi-purpose database. Uh, so with PostGIS and PostgreSQL, you can do 2D analysis with geometry, of course. You can do 3D analysis as well with SFSeagal extension. Uh, you can do point clouds analysis with, uh, this, uh, with the PG point cloud extension 
as well. And now with latest version, you have parallel processing, so you can use uh, multiple threads, uh, multiple processes to handle your queries automatically. And uh, with uh, latest uh, PostgreSQL version, you have very good uh, scalability options to deal with, uh, for example, with CITOS DB extension or that kind of thing. You can extend to multiple nodes uh, and processing on uh, distributed processing queries, that kind of thing. Uh, you also have a lot of uh, PostgreSQL extension, which can be used in combination with PostGIS, for example, uh, time series with uh, Timescale DB, which is an, a PostgreSQL extension, and allows you to handle a very huge amount of uh, time series data. So this piece of software, PostgreSQL and PostGIS, is also a gem in the world of uh, the open source uh, software. So of course we use it. Then QGIS desktop, uh, desktop application, so that's a generic GIS use case. Uh, we use QGIS, QGIS is now everywhere. Uh, you have seen it all over the place here at Phosphor-G. It's a general purpose GIS, so that's a desktop GIS, but also it's got a data processing framework, and come back to that, uh, you, so you can uh, have a, um, uh, agree to design your uh, own processes and to uh, process the data, but it's also important to note that it's a, a framework for application development as well. So you can use QGIS, uh, totally change the application, change the GUI, and adapt it to your specific needs. For example, here we have uh, the wastewater network of Paris, and they're managing uh, all the underground uh, wastewater network where you can walk in. Uh, everything is done with PostGIS and QGIS, and everything is uh, uh, RLS. Uh, so that's um, not only geometries, but you define the object according to their distance to a reference point. So whenever you move uh, one uh, pipe, everything attached to this pipe will move automatically with it. So uh, that's a very good use case of a specific application, and you can uh, change everything in QGIS to adapt to that. Uh, QGIS is also a very good cartography tool. That's uh, some example of what you can uh, do with uh, QGIS as uh, almost art, you would say. Um, this is a very nice map uh, with QGIS Composer. Uh, you can see all kinds of very uh, detailed and very well-designed uh, piece of uh, graphical elements. Um, this is another one, and uh, so in terms of cartography, QGIS doesn't have anything uh, lacking almost uh, compared to proprietary GIS, and that's very important. We are currently implementing something which is called selective masking, where you will be able to um, automatically mask uh, different levels of symbol for one uh, specific layer. So it's very uh, tailored in, uh, towards cartography, and it's very precise mapping for uh, very uh, specific rendering. You can do some uh, very good data analysis as well, like this one, which I like. Uh, it's very neat. And so that was QGIS desktop, but uh, whenever you want to go to the web, uh, then you have QGIS server. QGIS server is a certified server. If you've seen the presentation uh, from uh, Eric Lehmann earlier, uh, it does uh, take your data, use your QGIS project for symbology and all, and output uh, web services and uh, OGC web services. It's a certified server from OGC. It's a reference implementation for OGC WMS. Uh, and it does more than OGC standardized web services. For example, you can output but directly your PDF, which you designed in the Composer, uh, onto a web application. It's very easy to configure it, and that's where integration is important, is that you design your project in QGIS Desktop, and then uh, you will just copy your QGIS project onto a web directory, and you can serve your data directly as WMS. And uh, very important, it's been totally refactored for version 3. Before that, don't use QGIS server. It's not uh, industry grade, but uh, from uh, version 3 and uh, now on, uh, it's a very good quality. Uh, it works pretty well. You can use it in production. There is no problem with it. Then uh, you have a server with uh, web services, cartographic web services, but you want to see it in an application on the web. Uh, there are plenty of applications, I'll come back to that, but uh, our choice of preference goes to QWC2, which is QGIS Web Client 2. It's a web mapping application 
so it's dedicated for QGIS. It's uh, something which uh, uh, works for QGIS server and uh, used uh, QGIS features uh, at the best. It's based on open layers for the mapping uh, framework, uh, JavaScript mapping framework. And uh, very important, it's a community-based project, which means everyone uh, is invited to contribute to that and to uh, improve the software. It's got a modern structure and code, so it's very easy to extend. You can add new services, you can add new widgets in the interface uh, with programming, of course, but it's kind of easy to use. So it's an application, but also you can use it as a framework to develop your own application or to integrate that into uh, your uh, existing SDI infrastructure. Then you have Geonode. Geonode is a geodata portal or geo-CMS. It's originally uh, based on uh, geo-server. Uh, it allows you to share geodata, so you can browse, search, import, manage, create, and share your data, uh, your different layers. And uh, you can also manage users, you, ma you can create groups, you can uh, manage the access right to the data, and it's also something you can easily adapt and extend. Um, and nowadays, it kind of supports QGIS server. I talk a bit more about that, uh, but that's a very good uh, thing because uh, we want something more integrated, so we want to use QGIS server uh, with uh, our data portal, our geo CMS portal. And also, uh, QGIS Desktop is able to connect to Geonode, get the data from Geonode, and then you can uh, open the layers and all. So Geonode is uh, uh, like this. It's uh, an interface. You can find your layers, and you can uh, view the maps. You can uh, search. You can uh, uh, get uh, categories, uh, proprietaries, groups, etc., etc. Uh, it's a web application. Then you want to go to the field and uh, get some uh, some data from the field. So you got mobile QGIS, uh, which is QField. That's an Android application developed mainly by OpenGIS. Uh, it's reuse the QGIS engine. So again, mutualization. We have the same rendering engine, the same project. So it's very easy uh, to go from QGIS desktop to QField and, and back. Uh, you survey on the field, you synchronize your data back, and you can work seamlessly between both of them. So that's the interface on Android. Uh, you can acquire data, you can use your GPS, you can edit data, uh, you can do a lot of different things, edit attributes, and then you get your data back inside QGIS easily. I'm trying to finish fast then. So what do we have as feature for this stack? Uh, we can do cartography, you can do 2D analysis and 3D analysis with PostgreSQL and PostGIS. We can have data processing pipelines like this in QGIS processing. We can do imagery analysis thanks to QGIS processing modules. We can do data visualization with some plugins. We can uh, have web publication with QWC2. We can do network analysis and management in uh, PostgreSQL as well. And it's a smooth workflow. You go from the field, you survey with QField, uh, you have unified data storage with Post GIS, you, go, uh, you use desktop GIS to define symbology, to define cartographic exports. Uh, you put that on the web with QGIS server and QWC2, and you uh, can have a portal on top of that to, for data sharing with Geonode. You have the same rendering in all applications. You will use the symbology, you will use the composer, you will use the same software elements, and that's very important. That's a feature table. Maybe these business cases remind you of something. Uh, you can find them on some documentation of sales for a very big uh, software company. And you have the equivalent in uh, Phos4G. So for desktop production mapping uh, developers, you have QGIS. Uh, for application development on the web, you have QWC2. Uh, for mobile, you have QField. Uh, 3D analysis, network analysis, pipeline referencing, spatial analysis, workflow manager, you can do that in PostGIS, geostatistical analysis and business analysis with QGIS and PostGIS. Interoperability comes with Goodall and OGR and QGIS server for OGC web uh, services. Data review you can do with QGIS processing. So you get an kind of an equivalent of all features, and that's for free. So you don't have to pay extra licenses to get extra modules like you have in some other world. 
Why migrate now? Uh, we talked about a bit about that already, so I'll be fast. Uh, better TCO. It's not less expensive necessarily, but you have better value for the money. You can do training, so you avoid vendor locking for knowledge management as well. What you learn to your user, uh, it's not uh, specific to a sp uh, an application they won't have it in their niche job, and it's important for the sales department as well. You can adapt the stack, you have more feature, you can have performance and scaling without adding extra dollars. Uh, you have a good reliability now, you can do mutualization. Uh, OGC standards make transition and, and uh, migration easy uh, because you can migrate one element after the other and actually you do have support. There are a lot of established companies now providing support for this software stack. You have global support for all the software components at first, at once and uh, you have support from level 1 to level 3 and 4 if you want to go really deep inside PostgreSQL, for example, you can get your software fixed. Some migration, and I stop there because I'm already 20 minutes. Uh, Ministry of Environment, French one, uh, they did a large QGIS migration and PostgreSQL migration years ago. Uh, they found bugs, fixes, enhancements, Orange uh, Telecom is a, have a big application for network infrastructure management for the war uh, network in France. They migrated to Phos4G, they found bug fixes, uh, they found enhancement, and they're very happy and eager to talk about their use case, so you'll probably hear of them later on as well. Uh, Veolia, we kind of kicked out uh, S3 from Veolia for a very big application. Uh, was kind of easy compared, uh, comparing the prices they wanted for licenses. Do not forget there are a lot of other tools, GeoServer, Nexus, MapFish, Liz, Map, GS Cloud. You have the choice in the 4.4G. My stack is just a proposal for coherency, mutualization, and all. What next? That's my last slide. Uh, we want to improve uh, an application builder. That's something which does not exist in, uh, in the Phos4G world yet. Uh, we want improved QGIS uh, Geonode support. It's kind of basic for now. Better uh, CAD support, better 3D support, and better uh, BIM integration as well. So, any question? Yes, one. Thank you for your uh, presentation. If uh, FOS4G, as you mentioned now and described, is very good, and also from cost perspective, why we still see proprietary uh, companies getting contracts and getting also projects, big projects from different industries, telecom, oil and gas, and this. Why still there is a hesitance to go to FOS4G? <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> uh, so the question uh, was why do not everybody migrate right now? Uh, legacy, mainly. So uh, we did some study, for example, uh, how can I migrate from Oracle Spatial to uh, PostgreSQL and PostGIS? Yeah, so that was a question of a big client. Uh, my answer was do not migrate. Why? Because you had like 20 or 30 different applications relying on the Oracle database and if you wanted to do migration, it would cost like millions, three millions of developments for uh, changing the different application, testing, uh, training for the user, etc, etc. So better was do not touch your existing application, it's actually working. Uh, but for every new application you are going to develop, use Phos4G. And then you decommission your old application from time to time once you replace them. It's uh, sometimes refactoring as a uh, too, higher, too high cost uh, compared to restarting from scratch. So that's one of the explanations is legacy. Other explanation is uh, someone told no one ever got fired to use Oracle for, use, for choosing Oracle. Uh, so usually it's fear. 
and uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt is some uh, marketing uh, arguments uh, or methods used by proprietary software to uh, try to continue their vendor locking um, situation. So that's another explanation. This is not true any longer. I mean, uh, people got fired because they use Oracle now instead of PostgreSQL. So that's it. Another question? Do, do we have time? Yeah, the question is for uh, the water, uh, wastewater application I just saw. Uh, is it based on a proprietary uh, data model in uh, PostgreSQL? Uh, the answer is um, proprietary in the in the sense of uh, it's not open source. No, I mean uh, it can be open sourced. Uh, the thing is for Paris, uh, the wastewater network is very special because you can walk in it. It's uh, it's 2,000 kilometers of walkable paths under the ground, so it's not something you find in many different places. So the data model is specific to uh, this context. So it's not uh, much used for uh, out other contexts. Yeah, some have some have proprietary data model and uh, data model migration can be complicated as well. That's for sure. Uh, we have time for one last question, maybe. Other question? Okay. Thank We're you okay. Thank you.